The following is a Hoop Bowl presentation. Welcome to the Fantasy NBA Today podcast. What's going on, everybody? Welcome to the Fantasy NBA Today podcast, a hoop dash ball presentation. Joining us today is, well, actually, we had we had him on last week, and he was with Dan. And now, you know, I was like, I want to turn with the Schifferly. I want to turn with this guy. So he actually came to Sacramento, came into the ABI studios, because guess what? For some reason, they let me back. And joining me today is John Schifferly. John, how's it going? Good. How are you? I'm doing good. I'm doing good. So I got to ask you real quick. Do you like being called John or do you like being called Schifferly? Because I think I ta- I've talked to Aaron about you quite a few times. You know, you guys are doing some great things with the numbers, the analytics. And um, and he just calls you Schifferly. And I, I'm starting to get it, like accustomed to just calling you that. And I don't even know if you like it or not. So I'm asking you on the air a personal question. Is he like being called John or do you like being called Schifferly? I've, uh, I've never had a preference. So I guess either way works. Either way, well, then I'm going to go with Schifferly. Okay. It sounds, sounds cooler. I, if, if, if it gets to the point where you're like, you know what, I need to start showing more respect, I'll call you Mr. Schifferly. Oh, okay, perfect. <laughs> Gives it an edge, though, for now. So, John, we've been talking about this draft guide for a little bit now. And, you know, through this offseason, we've really been promoting it, and rightfully so, we've been getting great feedback. But I. I think it's time that we give the listeners out there a little bit of a sample. And with drafts coming up two weeks away till October hits, and normally in October is when you start seeing draft season, I think we should give the the fans and the listeners some sleepers and give them a taste about some players that no one's really talking about. And we're not even going to give out our whole list. We're just going to talk about a few guys. But I think we should start going on with some sleepers. So let's head to the Western Conference. Since you're in Sacramento, we'll stay in the Western Conference. Perfect. <laughs> and we'll go to Dallas, a team that's you know kind of the same but has new faces in new positions. And one of them being, and we're going to go with our very first sleeper here, is Andrew Bogut. Coming from Golden State, he, he and Harrison Bard's coming over to Dallas. What are your thoughts on a guy like Andrew Bogut and what he can bring for this Dallas team? You know, Bogut played a good 70 minutes I'm seeing here. or Sorry, not 70 minutes, 70 games last season, so... I don't know if you see the injuries as a huge issue. I think he's going to play quite a bit. And in those games, he's only getting 20-something minutes a game. He's shooting a high percentage, which is going to drop probably a little bit, not being on Golden State. But he's only taking four shots a game, playing 20 minutes. I mean, I have to think all that goes up in Dallas. Yeah, for me, I mean, I believe he averaged right around like 26 minutes last season. And he had the ball in his hands quite a bit to where he would initiate the offense at times where Curry would bring up the ball, give it to Bogut, and they start running a ton of flare screens and just having Curry running around, having Clay run around, having Dre, uh, Draymond Green run around until he found the open until he found the open man because Andrew Bogut is actually a really good passer. Yeah. And so I think what you're going to see in Dallas is he's not going to be used in the low post. I think they're going to put him at the mid block and start having Dirk in his favorite spot, which is in that – Low post, so he can do the the famous Dirk one foot fade away, which is nice. But at the same time, I think it's going to open up doors for a guy like Harrison Barnes, who I think is better when he's cutting to the basket and sloshing to the basket, and then Darren Williams to start roaming around a little bit more and not have so much attention on him with the ball in his hands. And I think it's actually going to help him stay a little bit healthier. And if you consider that a sleeper for that fact, I guess you can. But I do think that a lot of people are worried about the injuries, like you said. But the fact that he played 70 games, he only missed 12 games last season, has to be a bright spot. And he's also one of those guys that not only gets a good field goal percentage, he also gets you blocks. He also gets you rebounds and those assists from the big man position. So, yes, he could hurt you with the free throws and, and not necessarily help you too much in the points. But he also doesn't turn the ball over that much either. So I think those are huge benefits to a guy like Bogut. Yeah, and you have to think switching from a point guard like Steph Curry to Darren Williams, who's good in his own right but definitely not going to handle the ball as much as Steph. They don't really have the playmakers that Golden State had with Draymond Green, Steph Curry. I could see them running a lot more offense through Bogut than Golden State would have. And then on top of that too, is like yeah. like I said, we were talking about Darren Williams running yeah. around. There's another Curry actually in yeah. Dallas that can keep running around, and he can build another Curry relationship. 
Yeah, he absolutely can. And even with the limited time he played, I'm seeing here that he averaged 1.6 blocks a game. I mean, that's huge. Yeah, and I and I think too is like with Zaza Pachulia, he's not one of those guys that protects the rim very well. You said yeah. bro, bro just brought up second one point six blocks per game for Bogut. Yeah, yeah, he's be able to protect the rim, and he's a good stationary defender where he can or a positional defender where he can actually man up against his, his, the guy he's playing against. Yeah, and, and I think that that's going to help him out as well. But at the same time, he does have quick hands. He can steal the basketball. How many steals did he average per game? Looks like a half. Half steal, so getting you half steal, nearly two blocks a game, decent percentage, like over 50% shooting. Um, and then, then the passing, the rebounding. The only thing he doesn't really hurt, help you in is the free throw percentage because he actually hurts you there, and the points because he takes only four shots per game. But sticking with this team, I and mean, we talked about Darren Williams, maybe him running around, taking less attention away from him so he can get the open shot. But there's another guy on Dallas that I think no one's really talking about due to the fact about injuries. But he had a nice year last year coming back from that Achilles rupture. Yeah, he uh, uh, he played 78 games, you know, that's again. Nice. So that's nice. And it looks like if he can play that much, and it looks like I'm seeing that he almost played 34 minutes a game. I mean, his field goal percentage is a little low. But, you know, it's often talked about that with Achilles injuries, the second year back is going to be better than the first. And so... I do see probably a rise in production from him, probably being more efficient in that area. And then, you know, he's just, it doesn't seem like the injuries affected him long term as much as you'd think it could have, at least. My thing is, is that now there's no Chandler Parsons. Yeah. And I think that, and I know Harrison Barnes is going to have, take on that, the duties of what Chandler Parsons was doing, which is basically have the ball cut to the basket and kick out. But another player that can do that is Wes Matthews. And I think that trying to get, uh, you know, back into the swing of things, finding his footing that last season, uh, he didn't do as much as that he used to do with, with Portland. And I think what you're going to see this upcoming season during the 2016-17 campaign is him starting to put his back to the basket like he used to and start posting those guys. And Dirk just came out earlier today saying that he's hearing Wes Matthews is in the best shape he's ever been in. Yeah. He's in the gym every single day, and he's ready to go. And he's ready. He's already ready for the season. And I, I really think that the percentages from last season um, are really scaring people. The injuries are scaring people. The fact that you know he he how many he played seventy eight games last year. Yeah, something like let me check really quick. I believe it's seventy eight and around thirty four minutes. So it's getting undervalued. Yeah. And he's he, he's a knockdown shooter. It, it was two years ago, three years ago, when he was battling with Curry for the most threes in the season. Yeah, and he took 6.7 a game last year, so he's still taking a ton. Over or under on that number for this upcoming season? Well, like you said, he's still got that post he could play in there. Um, I'd have to go maybe maybe under, but I think it'll be close. Just because I think he'll have more. I mean, he clearly didn't have it on his two-point shots last year. Shooting 36% from three and then 38%. It looks like he actually barely took any two-point shots. He took more threes than he took twos. So I have to think his twos go up. I think Harrison Barnes will get a little, a couple touches. But I think maybe he'll take a few less threes, more twos. I'm gonna go with the over. Really? I think okay. he's gonna take more threes. I really do. I think that's the, that's the way this te this league is going. Is where if you can't, you need to have a guy who can shoot a ton of three pointer pointers and knock them down with some efficiency. I think Wes Matthews has the capability of knocking down three pointers uh, at a high clip, and a guy like Harrison Barnes, driving kick, is capable of doing that. Darren Williams, driving kick. What Andrew Bogut being able to find guys from the high block and passing it to Wes off maybe a pin down screen. I mean, there's so many different ways it can go, and I think that they're going to look at Wes Matthews that continue to get maybe 30, 34 minutes, 35 minutes a game, and just coming in there and really stretching the floor for a guy like Dirk to continue doing that that fadeaway Dirk, the one-footer <laughs> up in the air and, and knocking it down. Let me ask you this, though, about this Dallas team. Do you think they are a playoff team by the way they're constructed right now? Uh, you know... I'm personally not that high on Harrison Barnes. I mean, I think I think he's good. I just don't know if 
I don't know if he's going to be what they need him to be. And I know they tried to temper expectations the other day and saying, you know, it's going to be a long road with him, essentially. But I don't know. I mean, it's hard to bet against Adelman, though. Um, I'm very, very high on Harris. I'm, I'm one of the very really? few, it seems like. Dan Bespris, uh, another co-host of the show. Uh-huh. He's he he says the same thing. He's like, I'm not that high on Harrison Barnes. Um, I'm not I'm not sure A B stance on him, but I, I can see him also not being too high on Harrison Barnes. Yeah. I don't really know. I don't know his stance. I'd have to ask him. But I'm pretty high on Harrison Barnes. I think he's yeah. he's a good rebounder. I think he's an underrated shooter, especially from the corners. I, I mean, I remember last year I was bored, got home early, and I was like, you know what? I'm gonna turn on a Philly Warriors game. And another side note here is. I don't know why, but I enjoy watching Philly games. I know they're bad. I know they're going to lose, but there's an entertainment value in those games. I'm excited. For, I'm excited to see what they're going to be this upcoming season with, season with all those new faces. But yeah. last year in a Philly game, Harrison Barnes in the corner to a dagger to Philly's heart because Philly was putting up a fight. And who do they go to? They go to Harrison Barnes in the corner to knock down the three. He just always seems calm and he's ready to fill in. I think a lot of people are hating on him too for what happened in the playoffs and the fact he did not show up. Yeah. And, and they're underestimating what he can be. And I, I mean, I, all I can do is say is I hope that he's worked through that because I haven't talked to him at all and I haven't seen any workout videos like you have with Dwight Howard. I mean, he constantly wants to keep showing you that he's working on that mid-range jumper oh, yeah. or Joel Embiid's on the right track, so he has to keep showing the no-one-playing-defense workouts. <laughs> yeah. and, but – but I, I do think he has the capability of being a star in this league. And and I, maybe it's just the athleticism. Maybe it's the fact that I've been a fan of his since his college days. But I, 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 I'm I one of the very few that I have to respectfully disagree, Mr. <laughs> 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 Mr. Shiffley. I have to respectfully disagree that I do think Harrison Barnes can be a good player. I think uh, the two things that are really going well for him is that, well, there's the skills you talked about, the athleticism, but the two other things, I guess you could say, that are going really well for him are first, he clearly knows how to fill a role. And so if he can't turn into that number one option that I think you'd have to hope he would become if you give him a max contract, he knows how to be less than that. And he's okay with being that, if that makes sense. And you see so many players that could be good. Dion Waiters really comes to mind where he constantly thinks, you know, I'm going to be number one. I'm going to be the guy on this team. Or maybe he doesn't think that, but he certainly plays like it. And he doesn't know how to sit back and be someone that compliments other people. I think Harrison Barnes does that really well. So that's your worst case scenario with Barnes, is he's just a good small forward for you. I think another thing going well for him is that Adelman seems to really know how to get stuff out of players. I'm at so, Carlisle. Oh, sorry. Carlisle. <laughs> I keep calling him Adelman. <laughs> Y'all have made two very smart coaches, though. Yeah. So, But Carlisle, yeah, same thing. And I, I think I met him earlier as well. But, yeah, Carlisle just – I mean, you saw it with Darren Williams last year. He, he's so strategic. Yeah. On whatever he's doing. One of the brightest yeah. minds in the NBA right now. Yeah. And I don't want to harp on Harrison Barnes too much, so we'll move on here in just a second. The one thing, too, that I'll say – is that remember when Jay Crowder used to be on Dallas, mm -hmm. and everyone was like, "Who is this guy? He looks like he's filling a role very well." I think with Harrison Barnes having Dirk still there, having these veterans still there, and then having a guy like Andrew Bogut coming over with him, he gets to find himself in a place where he gets to know his role, gets to learn it, and still have the help of superstar talent. I mean, Darren Williams when he when he's healthy. I mean, he's never going to be what we thought he used to be. Remember when he was in Utah, everyone was like, oh, he's the next best point guard under Chris Paul, and they're battling for number one. That was just a few years ago. He's, he's never going to live up to that hype again. At least I don't think so. But he, he's still a nice player in itself. Uh, Wes Matthews talked about him being one of the sleepers on this team. A strong shooter next to him. That could be a clay, right? Yeah. And then you have Andrew Bogut, someone you've built that relationship with, protects the rim, and you have Dirk Nowitzki. Nowitzki, however you want to pronounce it, and that one footer, I mean, the superstar that he is, the clutchness that he is. I think Harrison Barnes has the opportunity to learn a role and become a player because defensively he's strong. Offensively, you know what he can do when uh, he's given the chances. And so I, that's why I'm going to say I'm, I'm still pretty high on a guy like Harrison Barnes. Yeah. So let's move on here. Let's keep. Let's go on to our next sleeper. And I think for the rest of it here, we're going to stick with the shooting guard theme. And we were talking about Wes Matthews and about the injuries and about how the percentages were up and down. We go to San Antonio, and there's a shooting guard in Danny Green who had a very down year after getting 
paid over the offseason. Do you think he has a bounce back year? I definitely do. I just don't see any way that he shoots 33% from three, at least. That's just, you know, that's just not what you think of when you think of him. You think of him as one of those just great three-point shooters. And the other thing is San Antonio is going to keep going to him because he knows how to defend at a high level, and he's played really well for them so many times before that he's going to get the opportunity to turn it around, and he's going to... I mean, I just don't see him being that bad again. I mean, I have to agree with you. I mean, Danny Green, the reason why he's a sleeper on, on this is because everyone thinks that, okay, he he, he, sh- he he shot the ball, he's missing, maybe this is where he starts declining because he got paid and he doesn't really have to try anymore. No, 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 no. San Antonio wants to win another championship. They're bringing these pieces over here because they want to win a championship, and Danny Green's going to become a huge part of that. He plays defense. He plays on both ends of the floor. He gets you steals, and from a shooting guard position, he gets you blocks. And the fact that he can knock down close to 45 to 48% of his shots, and the majority of his shots being three-pointers, that is something that you want to have on your team. Field goal, free throw, three-pointers, and gets you 13 points, which is always nice to have. He'll get you a couple rebounds, and the fact that he fills out the defensive stats. And then the best part, like we were talking about with Andrew Bogut, barely turns over the basketball. You, you put in the, that's a stat sheet stuffer type of guy. Is he going to be a first round pick, a second round pick? Of course not. That's not what you're not what you're picking him up for. He's a guy that you're getting in the latter half of your drafts because of course right now he's sliding because of last season. And I don't think people should be sleeping on him anymore. Danny Green saved me uh, two years ago to help me win win my title in my fantasy league because of the year that he was having. And don't forget when the Spurs won, he set record breaking. Uh, three-point records in, in, during the finals against the Cavs or against the Heat. So I, I, I'm going to continue staying high uh, on Danny Green. But you know, I, I want to bring this up too with Danny Green. Do you think that he's going to have as much opportunities as he used to now that Pal Gasol is there who still showed that he can be an offensive weapon? You have LaMarcus Aldridge, you have Kawhi Leonard, and you still have Tony Parker. I mean, how many shots do you still think he gets? Because maybe that's what people are nervous about is that how many shots is he going to be able to have with so much offensive talent still around him? You know, I think Tony Parker's role is about to go down a little bit. Not way down, but... He's sort of getting to that age where he may start to take a smaller role and turn that over to people like Kawhi Leonard, uh, Lamargus Aldridge, I mean, to an extent, Pau Gasol, just because you're going to get a guy that needs touches. And Danny Green, he was only, I mean, I think he was 29 last season. And, yeah, he was 29, so he's not that old. And it's just tough to think that he isn't going to be a part of their future going forward. If they're going to win more titles based around Kawhi Leonard and LaMarcus Aldridge, Danny Green's going to have to give them something. So they know that, and they know that they're going to need to give him an opportunity to get better. And, you know, like you said, a lot of people may think, oh, he got paid. He's just, now he's just content. Spurs don't tend to bring people in like that, you know? And to some degree, we can't know him and we can't know how he is. But you have to trust an organization that's brought in players like that, I mean, as long as I've been alive, and just know that this guy's no exception, you know? He wouldn't be there. Especially the way Pop makes sure that his players, you know, set an example, especially their veterans. Like, And then that's the one thing you got to love about Pop is that he'll yell at a guy like Tim Duncan, who, and we got to give a moment too. I mean, if... I never thought I'd see the day, but I knew it was coming at some point. That when we look at the sac or at the sac rookies at the San Antonio uh, Spurs uh, roster, and you won't see number twenty-one of Tim Duncan on there, that's so disheartening. I mean, I mean, he had such a great career, a first round, first ballot Hall of Famer for sure. Man, that's crazy. But like I was saying, Popovich will yell at you if you're not trying. He will take you off the floor. And I think a guy who was hungry for minutes and showed it in Rio to take over possible minutes for Pat, uh, Tony Parker is Patty Mills. Yeah. Patty Mills is a shooter, and he plays aggressive both both sides of the floor as well. And it, I, I want to see what he can be. I don't, I'm not going to put him on this sleepers list just because I don't think he's going to get the minutes to even be a sleeper. Yeah. But if he ever gets that opportunity of, let's say, uh, getting right around 25 minutes, maybe he's a nice you know waiver wire pick. I will say this, though. 
Tony Parker ever gets injured, DFS. We talked. You got you oh, and yeah. Dan talked about it. He'll be thirty five hundred dollars minimum value. You snag him up and you put him on your on your team because he's going to help you win some money. Yeah, and if it's a serious enough injury, even just full season fantasy, pick him up if you can. He's just a high IQ guy. Yeah. And that's why you got to love Patty Mills. So Danny Green was the next guy on our list. We move on down to our third and final – or third and final shooting guard and our, and, our, and our final sleeper here, and it's Josh Richardson of the Miami Heat. And the reason why I want to bring him up is because he was on this list regardless of the injury, but now you factor in an injury, which looks like he'll be out six to eight weeks with his timetable. Excuse me, as I uh, had too much to drink and now I'm burping <laughs> on the show. <laughs> show. But you know his timetable six to eight weeks, which means he's going to be missing a, a, a little bit of the, of the start of the season. He'll be he'll be out for the start of the season. Was that right around like 10, 15, 20 games tops? Yeah. What are your thoughts on a guy like Josh Richardson? Are you still looking at him at the latter half of your drafts, and and that's why we have him on this list, or is this someone that you got to? Right when you start seeing that he's healthy, you want to stash him away. You know, he's just – he's going to play a lot more next season, and that's a big part of all this. I mean, who did they lose on the wing? They lost Dwayne Wade, obviously, and then uh, Lou Aldang. Those minutes are going to have to go to Josh Richardson and Justice Winslow. So, I mean, he's going to play a lot more. He only played 52 games last year. He only played 21 – ish minutes last year and he only took 5.2 shots a game it looks like i mean those numbers can't stay the same they just people have to shoot the ball in the game people have to play and they only have so many options so for that reason alone and the reason you talked about with the injury a lot of people are overlooking him he's gonna be good next year he's gonna have a lot of opportunity to show what he can do so i see him as a major sleeper i I'm gonna be honest. I'm, I'm, I might still take him. I think a lot of people were already not drafting him, or at least waiting until the latter half of the draft. I think I could probably get him in the final round of the draft. Yeah. And, and being completely okay with it, knowing that you know what he's gonna miss. You know, maybe the first three weeks of the of the regular season, but then I have him for the remainder. He plays defense. He shoots threes. He has nice field goal percentage. He gets you steals and blocks from the shooting guard spot. We basically be talking about the same exact player with Wes Matthews, Danny Green, and now Josh Richardson. I mean, you're getting those type of players, and if you can get that type of player, and say maybe a top seventy five player in Josh Richardson, yeah, and you're getting him at the latter half of your draft, the final round possibly. Why not take that risk? Why not get that sleeper? Yeah, and I, I, I don't think it's unrealistic at all to see him at the end of the draft, and he. Uh, he was at half a block a game, like you mentioned. He's really good at that from the shooting guard spot, and that's only in 21 minutes. So I don't see any way he doesn't start first and second. Yeah, I think he's got a bright future. He was first year in the league, and he did really big things. So, All right, guys, that is our show. We gave you a little bit of a taste of what you can get in this draft guide. Those were actual names from the sleepers page in the draft guide. So as of right now, the draft guy is $11.99. Go out, go and purchase it, and, and, and see the entire list. I know they have a couple of deep, deeper league guys on there as well, so you definitely want to go check that out. Again, $11.99 for now. Once you get start getting closer to October into draft season, it's going to bump up to $17.99. So you want to get it while it's cheap, but as I said on Tuesday's show, $17.99 is still the cheapest out there. Yeah. And, and from what we're hearing and from what we're seeing, we already are the best out there. So you're getting the best at the cheapest price. We're, we're, we're Walmart. Yeah. <laughs> we're taking <laughs> over. We're almost a monopoly out here. And, uh, I mean, you'll buy it later, so you might as well buy it now and save the money. You have time to look at it. You know? You don't want to wait. Definitely. John, let the fans out there know where they can find you outline, what you'll be doing for the site uh, moving forward in the season. And, uh, and, and, you know, let them know what you're going to be doing this weekend. <laughs> I'll be spending the weekend in uh, beautiful Sacramento. It's always nice to get away from Santa Barbara. And, uh, you know, on the site, I'll just be generally covering fantasy stuff, covering some of the Kings when I can, and uh, just running the numbers as much as I can. So you can find me at John Schifferly on Twitter, and that's pretty much it.
You guys can follow me on all social media platforms of at VM Center. Follow the site at Hoopball Tweets. Bookmark hoop-ball.com look at all the fantasy blurbs that are coming up the hoop ball blog side there's there's been articles going up at least once a week um subscribe to the show itunes it's under the cause and bruce channel for now uh but that hopefully will soon change um sooner rather than later but go subscribe there leave us a rating check out the hoop balls youtube channel we have a new show unveiling on saturday with aaron brewski and myself it's a google hangouts it's a live show you guys can start somebody in your questions hashtag fantasy nba pod and uh until next week guys farewell This has been a Hoop Bowl presentation.